Should we start? Okay, so good evening everyone and welcome to this event by WIDS NOIDA. WIDS Women in Data Science is a global conference under Stanford that has several regional events worldwide. The aim of WIDS is to educate and inspire data scientists throughout the world regardless of their gender. It even aims to support women in this field. WIDS NOIDA is one such regional conference under the main event. So um, that was something about the community. Now I am Anushka Narula. I am your host for today. I'm currently pursuing computer science engineering from Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University for Women. I've been a strong believer of the fact that we should develop both in terms of growth and knowledge at every point of our time. And so my, this led my team to launch UACIT, an e-learning platform that aims, to, uh, that aims to bring together everyone on one platform and embrace them to function in harmony. We even believe that gender equality does not come by bringing women uh, just because of their gender, but it and more on the fact that we should not exclude them from everything we do. So this was something about me. So let's start with the event. So firstly, I would like to invite our speaker. So today we have with us the astounding Vruti Tana. Vruti is a multidisciplinary creative person, a data scientist, an analyst, a tech blogger, and a researcher. She's currently working as a data scientist at Signet Infotech. For years, she has served as a helping role for those who seek inspiration or advice in business and career. This year, she founded the Data Science Profit with an aim to address the career needs of data science professionals. So welcome, Vruti. We are so glad to have you here. Thanks, Anushka. Thanks for the very nice introduction about me. Okay. So, uh, Anushka has already introduced me, and I'm actually thankful to Wids and all the team, Chinmay, Harin, everyone, for you know considering me as a speaker. And uh, about my background, yeah, I'm working as a data scientist, and I have three years of experience. And I have done multiple projects. And today we are going to talk about one of the very important concepts of reinforcement learning, which is macro decision process. So we are going to have, you know, uh, a guide, and it will be an interactive session. So my aim for this um, session is, you know, I should not only speak; it's you who should participate along with me. So I request to have a book and pen with you so that even you can participate and you know have the question answer session with uh, me and you know answers uh, ready in your book so this will uh, boost your confidence and also you know you will be able to implement macro decision process in your business so i'm very excited to even explain it to and um, and i'm ready to for the explanation so i request all of you who are participating to have a book pen uh, ready with yourself and we will start in next 2 3 minutes till then i am waiting for you Right, so uh, we'll just begin. And uh, as Ruthie said, that everyone has to be active on the live chat and like say, like, go on with us. So, um, Ruthie, you can share your screen now. Yeah, I have shared. Can you see? Oh, 
So uh, you can start with the presentation now, and let's begin now. Okay. So ultimate guide to Markov decision process. So what is artificial intelligence? Like we are hearing uh, AI is everywhere. So artificial intelligence is a technique which enables machines to mimic human behavior. Like you are using Google Maps. You are using... Uh, you know, all the applications around you, which like WhatsApp and everything. Each of the application nowadays has machine learning and AI and in it. The CV in the Apple and everything that you see around you is an artificial intelligence technique. Now, what is machine learning? Machine learning is a subset of AI techniques which use statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. So what is reinforcement learning? So reinforcement learning is subset of machine learning that is concerned with how software engineers should take actions in an environment. Here we are going to cover one topic, which is Markov decision process with us. So I assume that uh, you already have a pen paper with you. And uh, yeah, and we are going to have an interactive session with this. and. Uh, I really wish that uh, you can implement this in your own business, in your own jobs or anything. So how reinforcement learning works? Okay. Can you see a bird? He's sitting. Okay, it is sit. It has two sets of actions. Okay. The first action is flying to the mountain. The second action is flying to the forest. Now, if that bird flies to the mountains, it gets reward. But what if it flies to the forest? It is a penalty. A crocodile will come and eat it. So now, what should a bird do to gain more and more reward? So the reward for the bird is to eat the bugs. So if he fly to the mountains, then it is a reward for him. Then he, for the reward, he will get a bug. So as you can see in this scenario, if I ask you a simple logical question, that for gaining that reward, what a bird should do simple he it should fly to the mountains and get in some rewards but what if, if it goes to the forest it gets penalty so what is reinforcement learning in the re reinforcement learning there is an environment okay so assume that this is a virtual environment in which you have an agent you have policies you have set of actions and of for that actions, you have either reward or a penalty. This is the scenario of reinforcement learning, which I have explained to you in a very uh, you know basic way, in a conceptual manner. Now, coming to the theory. So the process in which agent observes environment, that is the environment that we saw, output that consists of reward, the reward was the bug, and the next state, the state was flying to the mountains and then acting upon that. Then this whole process is Marco decision process or MDP. Okay, so with a, such a simple example, we understood the concept of Marco decision process. Now, what is Marco model? Marco model is a stochastic model used to model randomly changing system where it is assumed that future states depend only on the current state, not on the events that occur before it. Okay, fine. Like this looks like a lot of theory, like, okay, these are some properties and all. But what would be, how we can implement it? And, you know, there are a lot of mathematical formulas uh, that has, you know, determined by many research papers and very many concepts there are there. But you know, sometimes going through that research paper, uh, we find it boring. So, okay. I thought, let me put this concept in the most simplest way. Okay. Moving to my next slide. So, I am taking one, a very simple example to explain you the concept. Okay. The first example is one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So, now. If you have book and pen with you, I request all of you to write this example. One fish, two fish, red fish, and blue fish. Now, what is key? 
each distinct word is key each now what is token any word in sentence is a token so the following is the distribution of key and token so distinct words are one fish two red and blue and the total tokens are one four one 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 respectively so very simple right just go with me and you will understand everything now moving to the next okay so when i want to read something this is i think okay so when i want to read this example start one fish two fish red fish blue fish and this is how i will be able to read in a line that is from starting to the ending start one fish two fish red fish blue fish and okay now start and end i have just added to formulate a sentence with a starting and an ending point so start is one uh, it occurs only one time one is occurring also one time fish is occurring four times so these are nothing but the frequency right we all of us know what is frequency so next okay now what are the transition states so in markov decision process the most important thing for us is to understand transition states states one fish two fish red fish blue fish okay so if i read from start it is start to one then second is one to fish then fish to two then from fish it can go to red from fish it can go to blue and from fish it will end now if i start from two then from two i can go to fish it is very simple as we can see over here i am starting with start okay and then it is one then i am starting with one then it is fish as i can see in this sentence then from fish it is either going to two then from fish it is going to red from fish to blue and from fish to end now my next stage is two so from two it goes to fish from red it goes to fish from blue it goes to fish and from end it is none so yeah this example at this particular point of time might look funny or i don't know whatever but you know this is the most basic thing i'm touching so now from this transition state i am uh, you know formatting this picture from this picture you can see that from start to one the probability is one from fish there are four uh, stages that is from fish to blue from fish to red from fish to end from fish to two so from fish we can go to four states four other states so it is one fourth we are dividing one with the one fourth but the other thing that is from one to fish it is one then from blue to fish it is one then from red to fish it is one it is similar to this but this i have you know ex explained with a pictorial format and also now we are going to calculate probability on the basis of this so yeah what is transition matrix so in transition matrix as we determine the state of a bird you know that he was on a sit sitting state and then he was on a flying state but while flying he had two set of actions that is he can either move to fly to mountains or he can it can fly to forest and on the basis of that he gets either reward or penalty so what is important the transition matrix so we have state of bird from sitting to flying similarly in this particular example we have states of fish and one and two that is how we are putting that sentence in a sequence so a square matrix describing the probabilities of moving from one state to another in a dynamic system each row are the probabilities of moving from the state represented by that row to the other states so from state 1 to state 1 the probability is 1 1 if you can see over here p 1 1 then from state 1 if i'm moving to state 2 so, so it's the probability is, is 1 2 then it is 1 3 followed by 8 similarly 2 1 
two 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 three three one three two three three. So this is how the transition matrix looks like. Now we are going to take the same example of fish. Okay. So as we can see that uh, from start one fish blue red two end. So all the states are in this circular format. That is start one fish blue two end and red. And here are the probabilities. So what I am doing is I am putting states over here against which I am putting states over here. So this is nothing but a cross tab of the states so that we can determine the situation. Now as you can see from start I can only move to one. So I am saying the probability is exact one. So probability always is between zero to one, right? So here from start to one we have one. From one to fish we have one. And from fish, as I said, that we can move to four different states. So my probability probability will be 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25. This sums up to one. From blue to fish, the probability is one. As you can see from this picture, that from blue to fish the probability is one. Then from red to fish again the probability is one. From two to fish again the probability is one, and the end state. So in end state we don't have any probability. So we can leave it as it is and do not consider it in our uh, example or analysis that we. Do. So now the next. Okay, uh, I really want you to develop a transition matrix that we developed earlier. On the basis of earlier examples, okay. So this is the scenario. What if you have one, two, and three states? So how will you write the probabilities for each of them? I want all of you to, you know, write in your book pen. I will be taking, you know, three minutes. I will be giving you three minutes to write, and then I will be continuing. And then you can cross verify uh, the solution that I have in the next slide. Uh, with the solution that you wrote in your book, is it okay with everyone? I request the light people to just comment yes or no on on this. For uh, this, I'm keeping this slide. So you need to determine the states, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, and you need to write the probabilities over here. So next two minutes, I will be showing the solution. I am getting many yes. Wow, what a wonderful session! <laughs> okay, let's wait for few more, uh, one minute more, and I'll be uh, showing you the solution that how the transition matrix table will look like for this particular example. One more minute, people. Come on. Transition matrix is actually very important for marker decision process. If you are able to form this table, most of the problems will get solved. And for making this, you know, developing this transition matrix, you need domain expertise. That is your business expertise to, you know, um, determine the transition matrix table. So yeah, that's why I'm, you know, um, asking you and requesting you to have a book pen and you know draw transition matrix for this.
okay so here is the solution yeah so is it something uh, which you uh, you know formulated does it look same just verify against it so from 1 to 1 it is 0 0.5 as you can see from 1 to 2 it is 0 0.3 and from 1 to 3 it is 0 0.2 so this is how you can determine then from 2 to 1 0 0.1 then from 2 to 2 0 0.5 and from 2 to 3 0 0.4 so all of them will sum, sum up to 1. And here also similar thing. From 3 to 1, 0 0.7. From 3 to 2, 0 0.2. And from 3 to 3, 0 0.1. So now this transition table is actually very important for you to determine the Markov decision process. Okay. Now... We will be touching some basic concept of matrix multiplication. So for matrix multiplication, the number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. The result matrix known as the matrix product has the number of rows of the first and the number of columns of the second matrix. So this is the formula. If you can see A1, B1, C1, D1, is multiplied by A2, B2, C2, and D2. We have A1 into A2, which is A1 into A2, plus B1 into C2 here. Then C1 into A2, and D1 into C2. So this is how the multiplication happens. So uh, there are two examples, as you can see, example one and example two. So for the example two, I am giving you the hint that I am not having the formula. But for example 2, you are restricted to do up till here. From, uh, that is A1, A2 plus B1, C2, C1, A2 plus B1, C2. So this is how you can derive the matrix. After you complete this matrix, let me know. We will move to the next. So I am giving you next 4 minutes to do this. Maximum 4 minutes. And your time starts now. We are going to use this matrix multiplication for our next example. So that's why I'm requesting to, you know, understand how the matrix multiplication actually works. Okay, next one minute and I will be showing the answer for both of the multiplication. And you can do self-check on uh, this. Okay, so now I'm showing the answers. Is this what your answers look like? If yes, uh, then you got it. That how we can do matrix multiplication.
so now after this we are moving next okay so now i am showing one business case case market uh, share analysis i am keeping a very simple basic example so that i can uh, explain you macro decision process okay so now i am reading out uh, loud this example suppose okay i have one live comment okay thanks sorry suppose we are interested in analyzing the market share and customer loyalty for moves food liner and ashley's supermarket the only two grocery stores in a small town we focus on the sequence of shopping trips of one customer and assume that the customer makes one shopping trip each week to either moves or ashley's supermarket but not food okay so there are only two supermarkets in this example murphy and ashley so if uh, there is one you know shopping trip which goes weekly so if that person is shopping uh, in uh, yeah murphy he cannot shop in shop in ashley so this happens week over week this is the condition so we refer to the weekly periods or shopping trips as the trial of the process thus at each trial the customer will shop at either moffis food liner or ashley supermarket the particular store selected in a given week is referred to as the state of the system in that period because the customer has two shopping alternatives at each trial we say the system has two states state 1 is the moffis food liner and state 2 is the ashley supermarket okay so now that we have determined the states we all know by now that you know states are very important in uh, determining the transition matrix okay so now uh, for this uh, particular scenario we have two states murphy and ashley's supermarket suppose that as part of a market research study we collect data from 100 shoppers over a 10 week period in reviewing the in reviewing the data suppose that we find that all the customers who shopped at murphy's is in a given week 90% shopped at murphy's the following week while 10% switch to ashley's so at an overall level the 100 customers who uh, purchased you know at murphy's that is you know 90% purchased at murphy's only 10% now switch to ashley's suppose that suppose that similar data for the customers who shopped at ashley's in a given week showed that 80% shopped at ashley's the following week while 20% switched to murphy so just have a scenario in your mind you are purchasing from uh, murphy and from murphy in the next week the probability is what 90% that is vrutti is going from murphy the next week there is 90% probability that vrutti will purchase from murphy in the week and only there are 10% chances that vrutti will switch to ashley in week 2 okay now second scenario let's say i have shopped from ashley okay so now in week 1 vrutti has uh, purchased from ashley then there is 80% probability that she will go to ashley in week 2 and only 20% probability that she will shift to murphy so now just imagine a transition matrix in your mind 9 one uh, 9 1 2 8 okay wait okay so this is how it is okay so the transition probabilities is from murphy to ashley so when i am standing in murphy then there is 90% probability that in week 2 i will move to i will be shopping from murphy only and only 10% probability that i will be shopping from ashley now from ashley if i am uh, shopping from ashley in the in the you know current week then in the next week there is a tw only 20% probability that i will be purchasing from murphy and 80% from ashley please fit this in your mind please fit this probability matrix in your mind and you can even write it down if you want to write it down so because you know we are going to use it as a reference 
So from P11 0.9, P12 0.1, P21 0.2, P22 0.8. I am giving 30 seconds. If you want to write, you can write it down. Okay, I'm moving to the next slide. Okay, so now just assume that you are standing as of Murti. We are assuming that uh, Vrutti has purchased in the current week from Murphy. Okay, now from Murphy to now I am switching to week two. Okay, so what is the probability? 90% and 10%. If you recall the previous table, right? So from previous table, the week two will be 90% Murphy, 10% Ashley. Simple. Now I am in week two. Just assume Vrutti is in week two. Okay. So in week two, again, nine and one follows the same pattern. Now assume the Vrutti is in Ashley's market. That is, you know, in the 10% probability. Now in week three, so this was for week two, but from here, I start with the week three. So in week three, she has probability 80% in Ashley and 20% Murphy. So this is the same example that was in a tabular format. This is in a, you know, graphical format in a, like a tree format that from week zero, then the middle part is week one. The third part is week three. So week, sorry, one. 2, 3 or 0, 1, 2, whatever you want to consider as a pattern. So now, if I want to determine that, okay, if, uh, if I'm standing as of week 4, what is the probability of Vrutti staying in Murphy's, uh, shopping from Murphy and shopping from Ashley? Okay, so simple. What I'm doing is 0.9 into 0.9, that is this 0.9 into 0.9, I have multiplied to 0.81. Then this is 0.9 to 0.1, this is 0 0.09. Okay, then 0.1 to 0.2, I have multiplied this, and from 0.1 to 0.8, this. Okay, so now if I total up the Murphy's probability, it is 83%, and Ashley's probability is 17%. So in week four, the probability of Vrutti purchasing from Ashley is 17% and from Murphy, it is 83%. This is how it goes like, okay, this might look complex. So uh, let us simplify it uh, more. You know how? The transition table, sorry, the multiplication matrix. Okay, yeah, Harin, I will answer that question later. So, mathematical matrix multiplication. So, uh, kindly, you know, just follow me up to this, you know, end of this, and I will take all the questions later, apart from this. So, just, you know, uh, ask me questions related to this particular slide, because, you know, I will be jumping, you know, coming to that uh, at the end, all the questions at the end. Okay. So, Mathematical matrix multiplication. So what we are assuming here, what is one and zero? So one over here is, you know, I, as I stated earlier that I am starting from Murphy and this is Ashley. So if I'm starting from Murphy, I have to be one, zero. Now this is the same probability matrix that we, uh, you know, I showed you on the first slide. That is 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. So if I multiply both with the matrix multiplication, it is 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. Okay. Now I'm taking the 0 0.9, 0 0.1 over here because now I'm in week two. So this is my week one where I'm starting from Murphy. Okay. And this is week two. So in week two, obviously the probabilities will change because now we are multiplying it with the market uh, scenario. Okay. So in week two, it is 0 0.9, 0 0.1 multiplied by same thing, the same matrix that we have derived, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Now, 
can can you multiply this and you know have your answers over here then i will display i am giving you one minute Okay, so this is the multiplication, uh, zero point eight three and zero point one seven. So now, standing as of week two, I am taking this over here as a base, multiply by my my original, uh, you know, the transition of all the customers. So now the probabilities will change for week three, which will be zero point seven eight one and zero point two one nine. So here we have assumed that the transition is beginning from Murphy. What if the transition has begun from Ashley? This would be inverse, the first matrix. How? The, it would be zero here, and it would be one here, because we are assuming that this is Murphy and this is Ashley. The first part is Murphy, the second part is Ashley. If we are starting from Ashley, then it would be a reverse logic. Hi, Vivek Raja. Can we take all the questions later? please okay so uh, do you have any doubt up till here like whatever we discussed in this ppt so far so if you you know follow me in this you will be understanding all the applications slowly and gradually and how you will be implementing it so please uh, try to you know be with me and bear me for you know at least one hour and then i will be taking their questions and i think most of your questions will be answered if you focus on this conceptual knowledge so i'm i'm taking you to the concepts and then you will understand how it you can apply it and how you can you know, do all the applications on it so if there is any questions i'm waiting for one minute up till here Okay, seems like you know uh, the things are clear. Thanks, Harin, for the reply. Now uh, I am looking at the interpretation. So let's say we have determined the way we determine, you know, week zero, week one, week two, week three. This is the same table that is determined from the calculations that I showed you earlier. If you remember in our previous table, we were up till here, week three, zero point seven eight nine. Zero point two one nine. Similarly, here zero point seven eight nine, zero point two one nine. So I'm do, doing the same exercise up to week ten. So the interpretation is: if we start with thousand Murphys customer, that is one thousand customers who last shopped at Murphys, our analysis indicate that during the fifth weekly shopping period, seven twenty three would be customer of Murphy and only two seventy seven would be customer of Ashley. So this is how you can determine that how you can you know gain some insights with the help of this. Now moving to the next, if I know that the customer scenario at week five will be this, you know what other strategies I can formulate in my business? Yeah, before that, this is you know similar thing done with the Ashley. So I as I explained you that I have to change only the first matrix. That is, it was one zero here. That is, it was one zero over here. It is zero one over here. Why? Because zero one means zero is, uh, you know, you are beginning. Uh, sorry, one means. Okay. So these are the transition probabilities up to week ten. And this is how it shows. So in the week five, as you can see, that Ashley is actually losing customer despite of a customer starting at Ashley. So you know, Ashley will only have four, four, five of the thousand customers, and five, five, five of the thousand customers will go to Murphy. That is, they will transit from uh, Ashley to Murphy. Okay. 
now this is some theoretical thing the state probabilities at any stage of the process can be recursively calculated by multiplying the initial state probabilities by the state of the process at stage n so we did that the probability of the system being in a particular state after a large number of stages is called a steady state probability okay uh, let us explain you know understand with this an example okay so assume okay this is the pi 1 and pi 2 don't uh, we can you know this might be uh, misinterpreted so let us assume this is an x1 and x2 okay so x1 says long uh, long run proportion of murphy's visit and x2 says long run proportion of ashley's visit okay and if you remember the standard matrix that we developed from our question that you know 90% 10% 20% 80% okay and this is murphy and this is ashley just remember this two thing okay these symbols are very important this means murphy and this second means ashley just keep that in mind and now the steady state probabilities hmm. okay so uh, if i want to know that how many customer will will be murphy which is the first it is 0.9 and 0.2 how 0.9 and 0.2 here if you rem remember our transition matrix which we determined earlier okay that that is the total customer at murphy the second is ashley 0.1 plus 0.8 and if we sum bo both of them it should be one why because the probability is always one so now how to determine a steady state okay so now just assume that you know ashley that is x pi 2 or x2 is equals to 1 minus murphy we have to substitute this with that okay so murphy is equals to 0.9 uh, murphy plus 0.2 1 minus murphy as we determined that you know ashley will be 1 minus murphy okay this is how we determine simple mathematics that you know my x1 or pi1 will value will be 0.667 and uh, other thing will be other will be 0.33 simple multi you know subtracting 1 minus 0.667 also determine the same so yeah so if i want to determine my steady state probab uh, probabilities so if we have 1000 customers in the system the steady state at a markov process says that murphy will be always winning because even after long run murphy will always have 667 customers and ashley will have only 333 customers okay after even you know having a steady state probabilities when a steady state means no transition is possible a steady no transition only a steady so at that time murphy will win now next now ashley is smart he knows that you know i want to attract more customers from murphy suppose ashley supermarket is contemplating an advertisement campaign to attract more of murphy's customer to its store let us uh, suppose further that ashley believes this promotional strategy will increase the probability of a murphy's customer switching to ashley from 0.10 to 0.15 so just recall from the matrix 0 0.9 0 0.1 0 0.8 0 0.2 okay this was our initial matrix if you remember so from point now from 0.9 to 0.10 it is now 0.85 to 0 0.15 so 5% more of the customers have now transited to ashley so the probability reduced and you know they were uh, ashley was successful by let's say 5% so this is our new revised transition probabilities you can write this down uh, and you know or you can keep this in mind uh, i'm giving you next 20 seconds to write it down
okay i assume that you have written okay revise steady state probabilities so now point 85 point 20 we know that we have if we want to know the murphy's total then we have to add add both of this point 85 point 20 point 85 point 20 Point fifteen and point eighty, which is two. So one and two, it will be equal to one. Now again, we are assuming this that you know Ashley is equals to one minus Murphy. So Murphy is equals to point eighty five Murphy plus point twenty one minus Murphy, which is point fifty seven and point forty three. Okay, so now you can see that probability is increased at Ashley because of the promotional strategy formulated by ashley so now even we are at a steady state then ashley will with this promotional strategy that ashley has determined he will be able to retain you know more than earlier so let us assume have we have 6000 customer in the system then in the long run with steady state probabilities murphy's customer will be 0.57 And Ashley will be zero point forty three, which means three four two zero customers will be Murphys, and two five eight zero customers will be Ashleys. Simple six thousand multiplied by point five seven is three four two zero. Six thousand multiplied by point forty three is two five eight zero. Now let's say we have total market uh, consisting of this six thousand customers. Even earlier, okay, it was not one thousand; it was six thousand. Then Ashley would have two thousand customers in our earlier example. In this example, when you know uh, Ashley had point three three three, so six thousand multiplied by this will be two thousand, and it will transit to two five eight zero. So if the average weekly profit per customer is ten dollars. the proposed promotional strategy can be expected to increase ashley's profit by 5800 so 2580 minus 2000 is equals to dollar 580 per week and 580 per week to the customers that is 10 dollars so 5800 okay if the cost of the promotional campaign is less than 5800 per week ashley should consider implementing the strategy okay so now if ashley wants to determine that whether i should go with this promotional strategy or not then he can hypothetically determine the probabilities that how the customer can transit from murphy to them and then if the cost is less and the profit is more then they can consider uh, this so yeah here it's an end to my example where you know develop transition matrix so there is nothing like you know a standard approach for this but the main important thing is you know deriving the transition matrix deriving the probabilities which requires lot of domain expertise that is your business knowledge once you understand that then only you can you know apply you can apply it anywhere it's on your intelligence also you know multiplying these two things you know we go with it it depends on from data scientist to data scientist that is uh, you can determine your own logic out of it but this is how the concept of markov decision is that is uh, your current state is dependent on your past state and how are you transiting so transition probabilities yeah that concept will be you know unique and uniform across all of them the rest part is human intelligence that you can uh, you know formulate in your own way so yeah we can uh, i can i am planning to move you know this on my blogs www.gutitanna.com which will be data science profit.com which is coming soon and you can refer to this in future this example also there are many examples even you can see in youtube but i try to put it and explain it into a you know in a most simplest and easiest way so that you can get the concept of markov decision and how you can actually apply it so yeah now we can uh, move to the question answer session so question okay so thank you rati for sharing all these insights and uh, now let's move on to the uh, question 
that works. Uh, so there's one question by Vivek Raja. Does most of the weather forecasting models use Markov models? So uh, for the weather forecasting models, there could be many machine learning techniques which are coming up. And if you want to forecast, uh, you know, Markov models, you have to determine, you know, your states uh, on the basis of that. So as we go on through this concept, we determine that we need to have some states. The states are followed by actions. Okay. So what could be the probable states? The states could be, you know, sunny weather, rainy weather, uh, or anything in between. So you have to determine the states. And once you determine the states, you can, you know, calculate the probability and derive your transition matrix. Once you have transition matrix, you can derive your own solution using any mathematical computation. So, yeah, you can use uh, weather forecasting models. Whether it is used by most of the people or not, uh, sorry, I'm not aware about it, whether it is used by most of them or not. But, yes, you can use it or apply it. Okay, so hope this answers your question, Vivek. And there was someone else also. Uh, there was Patan who gave some insights on this too. So I hope this issue, like this question, is resolved. There's another question. Uh, that is, what are the applications of Markov chains? You would also like to know about the types of Markov chains. Okay, types of Markov chain is you know first order Markov chain, second order, third order. So what are these orders? So let's say uh, order, okay. Uh, okay, I'm giving you a simple example that I want to eat Maggi, you know, yummy, yummy Maggi. So for eating a Maggi, what I need to go, where, what I need to do, I need to go to a shop, purchase Maggi, then I need to cook and then I can eat. Okay, so what are the states? There are some, let's say there are three states. Eating is my last state. So the immediate previous state was, you know, cooking it. And before that, buying it from a shopkeeper. So let's say, um, what is first order? So for, no, so what is second order? So let us understand that second order. The second order Markov model is that your current state, which is, you know, eating the Maggi, is determined from the first two states. That is, what is the probability of first two states? The first state is buying from a shopkeeper. Yes, no, and what is the probability? And the second is cooking it. And the third is eating. So eating is my current state, which is dependent on the first two states. Let's say Maggie is already available at my home. So if Maggie is available at my home, I not need to purchase and go to the shop. So I'm removing that state, and I'm just cooking it and eating it. So since I'm eating it, the last state which was cooking it, uh, cooking it, so it was my first order Marco model. That is, my current state is dependent only on my first past one state. So if we have two states, if it's two order Marco, three state, then three order Marco like that. So I just explain you in a simple example so that you know it enters into your mind. And there is something like hidden Marco models, uh, if you have heard of. So what are hidden Marco models? hidden marker models let's say uh, i am determining mood of anushka so anushka is very happy when it is raining and she is very sad when it is sunny okay so i am determining her mood which is her behavior happy and say sad on the basis of weather here happy and sad will be my states right that is how anushka's behavior is transiting from happy to sad but now, what here we are missing on? We are actually missing on the weather and how the mm -hmm. probability of weather will actually fall. For example, we have four days in a week. Just uh, cut off the last three days for the, our example. So for our simplicity, let's say we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So for Monday, let's say, assume that it is sunny. Second day is rainy. Third day is sunny. Fourth day is rainy. So Anushka is sad, happy, sad, happy. Now that is, you know, 50-50 probability for happy, sad, happy and sad. Also for rainy and sunny, we are determining. So the rain and sunny, the pattern of raining and sunny, raining and sunny, it's falling like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's, it, it is also 50%, 50%. 
the the rainy and sunny which we have not determined as a actual state is actually a hidden state which we have not determined but it is actually impacting our en environment so this is what hidden markov model concept actually looks like so you need to determine so another example you know you can take the covid example that it can it is a hidden state it is like you know situational that you know affects most of your revenue and everything but i thought let us not move to the complex part and let us understand simply by simple examples so yeah this are some of the macro models so that was really great that you took a live example and you just took a situation and explained so i hope that this is clear uh, we have another question on uh, in game development can computer control player be uh, made as intelligent as human control player by training it with reinforcement learning so like yes. how is intelligence is involved in it yes yes definitely so i was working as a data scientist for approximately few months in a game company and you know uh, i came into markov decision process uh, uh, example when i was in that company i came into research uh, from that particular company only and you know even the kings if you have heard the name of kings uh, this famous fruit no 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 candy crush yeah they, even they are using markov decision in the back end they are actually using reinforcement learning with them where they have particular states and you know uh, they have determined the behavior like you know this is encouraging this is you know demotivating like let's say you are failing more and more it is demotivating for a user so how you should replace it so they are working on the psychology and their psychology they are the states so it is a very interesting you can even search on this that how this markov decision concept that is determining the states you can actually use in the gaming concept okay that's really nice like I never thought of these things. I came across. I played such games, but I never thought of like how is macro process involved in that. So that's really good. And uh, there are several uh, comments which say that yeah, they were able to follow you like as and when like whenever you told to plot a graph or like solve for a matrix, so people were following that. Uh, there's another question on difference between Markov and hidden Markov chains. So you already covered that in the previous one. So let's move on to the next question. Um, Okay. Uh, the question is, how can Markov chain help in lead generation when customers are giving interest in purchasing products through an online portal? Lead generation. That is, you are bringing in uh, more customers. Okay, so for that particular aspects, uh, you need. So basic concept over here is, you need to determine the states. actions their rewards and their punishment and on the basis of that you can formulate a transition matrix so for a lead let's say you have leads okay uh hmm. so so let's say uh, you you put it the example of i think online website that how uh, we can do this so there are various states like quick click, click through through rate and there are other matrix so those you can use as a states that is how much they are clicking on this particular page or let's say this particular brand or this particular product and they have you know in their wish list which never converted to shopping so you can determine the probability that okay this particular brand is always you know in the wish list so the probability is this but with this it has shifted from this to the shopping then the probability is this then you can you know have some promotional strategy like like we saw in ashley that you can offer some discounts after looking at the transition that okay i am a new customer i have all the sets of probabilities ready with me now i have you know clicked on this brand now after clicking on it my it goes into my wish list but from wish list as we know that they are not converting that is the lead is not shopping that is not converting into a customer so and you have already a, or you already have that probability and you already have that states you can offer some promotional strategy and you can also put some hidden layers which you are you know the behavior which you you cannot see so yeah you can determine it on your own this is one of the ways okay so um, 
yeah with this like we're done with i'm done with all the questions and thank you so much ruti for taking out time and sharing your knowledge with us like all of us like you kept us engaged throughout like you were giving us tasks that okay multiply this and solve the matrix not everything so that was really good and to all the viewers out there thank you so much uh, with this we have come to an end of the first week of virtual sessions uh, we do have uh, such events lined up for the coming weeks so see you all there and stay tuned with us thank you thank you anushka thanks chinmay harin for this thank you so uh, we'd like to end up this broadcast thank you everyone thank you everyone bye bye